Here at Puzzle in a Thunderstorm, we immerse ourselves in all forms of Christian entertainment, be they movie, music, book, or video. Sometimes we do it to better arm ourselves with counter-apologetics. Sometimes we do it to see what kind of vile messages Christian leaders are sending to their flocks. And sometimes we do it just to stare in awe at how bad things can really be. And we're going to do that last one for you on this installment of God Awful Minis. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Poison. It's the story of a movie sitting on the metaphor of its own balls and physically injuring itself. So <laughs> bad that they tried to do a metaphor so hard and it did and not they did they, I don't know about hard, but yes. They, <laughs> so, Eli, how bad was this movie? Well... If you love the heavy-handed metaphors of your local pastor, but you wish he understood them even less than you do, <laughs> you will love this mini. I don't think they understand the word metaphor even, oh, let alone like the one no, they were trying to what execute. It does. Yeah. No. Yeah. All right. So is there anything you guys to go and nominate this movie for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah. Besides metaphor, I'm going to say best worst the church where these people go, these people who made this movie clearly go to a church, I think in the UK, this church fucking hates them and was like, all right, you're going to do a little skit movie. You can, you can shoot it in the back, not in the front of the church. In the fucking <laughs> antechamber. We actually get a scene next to the dumpsters in the back alley. Mm -hmm. We do. Yeah. Yep. I'm going to go, of course, with Abe, because we all like looked at it and we were like, well, you can't do best, worst metaphor because that's too obvious. It's uh, weird that course, we don't yeah. all three have that. But I went with best, worst couples fight. Sure. We'll get there. It's <laughs> it's fun. And I'm going to go with best, worst magazines. Once again, we will get there. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. The magazines, the, the metaphor, yeah. magazine metaphor, something. Not no, they're actually magazines about the metaphor. <laughs> they are, or, or are they the metaphor? Or we are don't they the metaphor know. of the metaphor? It's, or are they a simile for the metaphor? <laughs> Ooh. Did Foucault make this movie, guys? I think Foucault might have made this movie. Or did we? All right. So we're going to kick this one off with this amazing lazy cross logo for Invisible Sword Productions. <laughs> right? With another one of those, like, actually, uh, Christianity is pretty cool. If you lay the cross on the side, it's kind of like a sword. Yeah. For when Fiverr is too expensive for your logo needs. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, four. They went to four. So then we, we get 86% of a trigger warning, right? It says, this program contains subjects, meh, that might, may be, I'm sorry, that may disturbing to some view. Viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> they ran out of budget and they only got like a little bit of the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You guys, uh, you guys buckled in when you saw that, right? When you were like, oh, they can't do the opening title screen right. This yes, is going to yes. be something. Yeah. yeah. Although it, it says viewer discretion advised and then the cold open guy drinking pee. And I was like, OK, well, thank you for for the advisement. OK. Yeah. So, no, it, it, like, OK, so I don't think this is supposed to be pee, but that's sure what it feels like right after it says viewer discretion is advised. And we cut to this guy drinking yellow liquid from a beat up plastic bottle. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so this is Colin and he drinks poison every day. Now, Poison is going to stand in, is our metaphor, right? But every, everything is just poison. Everything that is sin is just marked with a big skull and crossbones. And that's the clever idea they had that they thought, wow, we could make a whole movie based on, right? Right. But he won't drink any spirit water, you know, just in case the poison metaphor was too subtle for you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> spirit water. Yeah, we get a narrator that's like, Colin is 32 years old and drinks poison every day, but refuses to drink the spirit water. And and I wrote my notes. And no, audience, you are no less grounded in what the fuck is going on than we are. <laughs> sure aren't. Yeah. And it, it also seems very confusing, like what purpose they think the poison serves because they don't know why anyone would sin when loving Jesus is so great. So he's like, I love drinking the poison. It, it's delicious. Also, I'm addicted. Also, I have bottles and cans on my table. I don't know. These are mine. <laughs> All right. So it would be impossible to overstate how cheaply they have made these cans and bottles into cans and bottles of poison. 
Hey, let me, let me give it a shot. Hey, a uh, podcast listener, uh, just you got your home printer there? Just grab a piece of paper from there and just wrap it around a random can you have in your kitchen if you got one. I think already too professional. You did too better. You yeah. did a much better job than this movie did. Do you have any construction paper in a garbage can that you could just grab? <laughs> and an old crayon? It's a, a little wrinkly if it could be a little wrinkly. And please, by all means, don't match it to the size of the can or anything. No, definitely not. <laughs> Somebody definitely cut their face on the edge of the paper that was extending past yeah, the can. No question. By the end of the movie, everybody's got a paper cut on their lip. I love it. That's how they chose to end it is when everyone had a paper cut on set, they all left. Right. So, we, But we've got Colin sitting there talking about how much he loves the poison. And then there's a chick interviewing him about why he loves the poison. And she's like, you know, does it bother you that you're addicted to the poison? And he goes, no, because. And then he pauses for like 37 years and he goes, it takes away the pain. <laughs> so. I also drink atheism to take away my pain. I get yeah. it. Yeah, that's, no, the, that is the atheism porn gayness. Okay, my favorite little detail about this scene, this guy playing Colin has a sweatband on and they're just sitting there. And he, I guess he's acting so hard. He's acting so he's hard that the sweat was getting into it, obviously. <laughs> act, 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 act. <laughs> my favorite little detail of this scene is that the quote-unquote reporter is taking notes, but we can see the notes and they're very clearly just her squiggling on the piece of yes, paper. So it, right. I, yeah. There's nothing. Did you just mime taking a note? No, it's no, real. I, took a real I am it's a very writing important. real word. No, you're writing what you're saying right now? She switches over to how my son holds crayons. Okay, you know what? It's probably yeah. better for you to just mime. <laughs> So we see him drinking some poison while a priest tries to give him spirit water. And then the narrator explains what we're looking at, right? And as, as, as much as I normally am not a fan of narrating your own scene as you're showing it to me, in this instance, I'll take whatever the fuck I can get. This is Pastor Jesse Franks, and he is an advocate for pure spirit water. Huh? Okay, so this is real. At this moment, I was like, Oh, I, th I thought they were doing a metaphor, but is he actually an advocate for spirit water? Whatever that means in real life? And no, the answer is no. But just the fact that I had to ask, I genuinely had to ask, that's a real problem with your right, thing. Right. There was a point where all of us are like, oh, they're going to try to sell us this water. No. Oh, 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 okay. They're just still doing an analogy so on the nose that Pilgrim's Progress would be embarrassed by it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, and it's made even more confusing of the fact that they did a real man on the street shot here, right? There's someone with a camcorder and a really terrible case of MS, so I, I don't want to poke too much fun on them. He's following this pastor as he tries to hand out spirit water to real people on the street and most of them tell them to fuck themselves but the best is some car is backing in that very clearly just sees like oh free water and they're like yeah I'm thirsty I'll take one and then he does that thing where he holds onto the bottle and starts to talk to them about Jesus and you can watch the guy in the passenger side be like the water's not worth it anymore please stop talking to me <laughs> yes, the water right, is yeah. not worth it I will drink <laughs> from the sewer drain rather than continue this conversation <laughs> drive drive <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Also, just for the record, yeah, he's handing out spirit water. Holy water is just full of shit molecules. Just full of yes, shit molecules. Full yeah. of, so th that's poison. Your thing yep. is poison. Yeah, really, honestly. So yeah, and so then we're going to do some direct address with the water preacher himself, right? Yeah. He's like, you know, I'm offering them free water straight from God himself. And I'm like... Could you guys only afford half of the analogy? <laughs> right. What happened? Yes. Also, it's not free. Your your free spirit water. You're, this is a metaphor for like becoming Christian. That's not free. You're going to ask for nope. money in a second. Yeah. That's like taking your free CD in Times Square. And then you're going to be like, actually, I just uh, need a little bit of money to work on the next album. No, okay. Yeah. It's actually significantly worse than that. Because if you didn't take the CD and they were like, I guess I have to burn you and your family in fire forever. Yeah. It would actually be worse than <laughs> yeah. the con that happens. If you continue it. That's what happens. And then we get these lovely little like inner cuts, which are supposed to be the reasons that people sin, right? Someone's like, I've been eating and drinking poison since I was a kid. I only drink diet poison because God is fake, blah, 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 right? All that stuff. And the reason why I love these inner cuts is, is excuse me my, as I self-indulge slightly, I 
sometimes get to teach high schoolers drama. And people often ask me, why would you do that to yourself on purpose when it's not your job? And it's because when you see really, really young people act, you get to see like talent when it's completely pure and unaffected by like a bunch of teachers who have been assholes to them, right? And so it's really wonderful. This montage of acting is the opposite of that feeling. It's the opposite of talent in its purest form. It's a lack of talent in its pure. It's the dark matter of talent is this series of actors. We found another anti-master class. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is fucking great. We see this happy couple where they're like, well, you know, we've been eating and drinking poison together since we were kids. We love to partake together in poisonous rituals. I'm like, what are we doing here? <laughs> we're losing the metaphor, Doc. Get in there with the paddles. Get in there with the paddles. <laughs> right. There's also this one, like, really nervous lady whose eyes are trying to read something written on the inside of my skull mm -hmm. who's like, you know, I used to drink poison, but now I don't. I drink the spirit water now, but sometimes I still drink the poison because it's addictive. And we're like, who are you? What do you who, represent? What side I are you on? Get it. Okay, but now it's time for my, almost my favorite part of the movie because we cut back to the pastor trying to give people out water and mm -hmm. we see his full-size body for the first time in relation to an actual object. And unless the bench he's standing on is 11 feet tall, he is a tiny little man, this pastor. He is five foot nothing. <laughs> yeah, and he's standing on top of the park bench as, as though to distract you from how short he is. And I'm like, don't do that, you fucking asshole. People have to sit there. And then we get this goth lady that walks by. Now, we're going to have about three of these in a row, these women that are like supposed to be like the bad chicks that drink a lot of poison or whatever. And they've all like found different ways of representing that without... <laughs> <laughs> at all doing the kind of things that would represent that. This one's is like, I'm going to wear a lot of black clothes, mm -hmm. right? It gets weirder from there. This shirt is a tri-blend of mixed fibers. Yeah. Mwah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> nine cigarettes. I also like the last lady because her line was given was too long. And so she has to like jam it in super fast, right? And he's like, try some water. And she's like, buzz off, try some water. I'm having a great time with my poison. Try some water. Your God is a myth and a lie. And I'll have you arrested if you ever bother me again because you violated code <laughs> section. <laughs> oh, fuck. <sighs> I didn't do it in a breath again. Can we try again? I'll walk yeah. slower. I'll walk slower. Yeah, that was an atheist getting a priest in a park arrested. And that's why you never see preachers in parks is because we do that all the time. That's right. what they say. No, yeah. Obviously, because the atheists have been arrested. So then, so then the priest explains that, yes, he actually has been arrested for trying to give people his reclaimed rainwater or whatever the fuck it is, that is that's in those bottles. <laughs> right? He says, I keep getting arrested for giving away free water. And I was like, it's a, it's a weird flex, man. You... You, you feel like you did something else wrong in there and next to the giving And disturbing the peace. Uh, yeah, there right, okay. right. He's been arrested for disturbing the peace and preaching false doctrine about the spirit water. Really? Clearly. Yeah. Preaching false doctrine? That sounds like a government based on spirit water is in charge. Of yes, the I was going to say. So yes, is that's the poison bad, right? A different church now? Right. The spirit seltzer government was mad at you. Do you hear it? Do you hear that yes. your thing's done? <laughs> and then he says... That Jesus gave him that water. Yes. Which is a very silly thing to do to your metaphor, <laughs> right? Because I'm picturing <laughs> Jesus just unloading a bunch of cases from the back of his truck. Now, do please give this out to people or I will oh, burn them you're forever. Me, I, I thought we were doing a metaphor. Are you not doing a metaphor? You're Jesus giving me real the, water? It's actual just bottles of water? No, nope, this is for you. Okay. Yeah. They have shit in them? Yeah. It, it's almost at this point, it was like they replaced, they did uh, like a find and replace with water and gospel or something. Yeah. And so, and then they get owned in their own fucking movie with the lightest possible argument. So the interviewer lady from before, she's talking to the priest and she goes, so how do you know that the spirit water works? And he says, because, and th these are direct quotes. He says, because that's what God wants. And she says, how do you know what God wants? And he says, because God is everything, everywhere. <laughs> and that's what? nothing. And then you watch him look over and he's like, you didn't write anything on, you, you faked writing on that piece of paper again. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, all right, I'll write down pass for that one. You said nothing. All right, all right okay, three points Yes, <laughs> for Gryffindor. I love that they couldn't spring for a notebook for this person to take notes in as an interviewer. No, no. They just had printer paper, but then 
they didn't want to waste a piece of printer paper. And somebody was like, we want to just put that paper back into the printer. We don't have the next ream yet. <laughs> yeah, don't so actually write, don't write don't actually write on it. You, have you, to you actually it. printed most of You're our... You're definitely not getting a notebook. <laughs> took a lot of our paper to print all those little poison labels I thought was going to be less than that. So, and then some fucking rando runs into the movie and he's like, I would like a meet cute now. Yeah. And hey, podcast listener, if you thought the accents, because there are accents in this movie, were hard to ha understand so far, get a load of this guy who will kind of be the main character for the rest of the movie. Yes. But I watched literally every scene with him at least twice to understand a single fucking word he said. Yeah, this is John, and, and this is where we're going to get the best of the poisony women. This the, the John sees this woman. She's got a huge costume feather boa. Feather on. boa, just That's like the whores of Babylon. That was, yes. that was the sin, was the feather boa. But it, oh, it gets better. It gets better because he drives up and he's like, yes. hello. And she's like, yes, feather boa, feather boa. And then she sits in the back seat. Yes. Of his car, he drives her somewhere. So we see him getting into poison. He's doing poison at all of the parties with all of the hot chicks. He becomes a cab driver. It says he becomes a cab driver, which is, I guess, the most poisonous of all the occupations. That's how you meet the really lascivious, poisony chicks. Obviously, right? yeah. yeah. Taxi biz is a hotbed for atheism, right? Like, I feel oh, like that's, that's accurate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. You do drive by atheism. There's a lot of stuff you can do there. Well, and then we, we get him picking up someone as a cab driver. And, and this is a, I'm going to say, 61-year-old woman who also was told to do rowdy and poisonous. She's wearing a big wedding veil headdress thing. Yeah. He says, at one point, I picked up a woman on her hen night and I couldn't control the poison. And I was like, is, it, is this guy about to do a metaphor rape of a woman on her bachelorette part. What the fuck is happening in this movie? I don't know. I, so I, did, I didn't catch what he was saying enough to know that that's what was going on. So, okay. At least the veil makes sense. You didn't watch it 17 times, no right, illusion. Right. Doesn't he say, one night I overdosed on the yes. poison? Yeah. So this is yep. the order of operations what? that confused me so much. He picks up the 340-year-old mummy bride. He says he couldn't <laughs> control the poison. He overdosed on poison. And then he met a girl who made him better. What does the movie think they meant by that in their meta? What is overdosing? On, yeah, they're like losing a, it like a child's grasp on a balloon. A bender of atheism. It's very confusing. Yeah. No, they, what the poison actually represents. So, okay, so the poison is supposed to represent sin in all its forms. But what happens then is that the metaphor starts to contradict itself. Right. Because poison is a thing you drink, but it's also a magazine you watch. And it's also a not <laughs> believing in God that you have. Right. Yeah. So, OK. So but John got married one day and afterwards, after he got married, his wife found out how serious his poison addiction really was. That's when she found Eli's best worst, all his poison magazines. Yes, and these poison magazines are why they lost access to the printer because they very clearly just printed <laughs> the word poison 50 times and she hands him just a sheaf of paper and is like... And glued it to the top of the <laughs> magazine. Yes, yes. So, so we get, and then we get my best words, right? Where she confronts him in the hallway about his poison magazines. And he, like, they're doing the stupid fucking thing that people who can't act do where like, he doesn't have any lines and she doesn't have any lines. Right. So the, the, like the, we, we don't hear what they're actually saying. We're just hearing the voiceover as this is happening. So she like never gives him an opportunity to talk at any point in it as she just barks nothingness at him and then smacks the shit out of him. Beats the oh my crap God. She hits out him, of him way too hard in real a life. Lot. And yes, like, absolutely. What the fuck? <laughs> and hey, everybody, John is not a I don't hit women type, so there's a real danger in this for her. Yeah, this it feels very uncomfortable for a minute there. Yeah. We're gonna see a boxing match. But then he's like, but he comes over in, in, in the voiceover and he's like, and she was going to leave me because of all the poison, but I convinced her to stay and have a family with me instead. And I'm like, oh yeah, no, that's a great idea. I bet. Fucking I bet. yikes. Uh, unfriend on Facebook. Unfriend. And, and by the way, the, the, the message of this movie, of course, will be that she made the right decision. She stood by her poison addicted husband and had a kid with him, right? It all mm -hmm. works out for him because of that. Oh, God, that is the message. I didn't even notice what they were doing because the metaphor was so confusing. Okay. Right, right. 
So yeah, so John drank spirit water for a while, but then he got back on the poison again. His wife got a call from the hospital. He'd overdosed on, again, it was magazines just a minute ago. What does this Ma- mean? <laughs> the poison magazine such got a two for one deal. It's unclear. He overdosed on pornography, perhaps? I- I've done that. Okay, to be fair, that is a real <laughs> medical condition. Okay. <laughs> I love because they have the, like the couple like standing there telling us the like what happened reality TV style. And at one point he tries to snuggle her and she's like, oh, fuck you. Yeah, it's so <laughs> funny because that's very clear. The actor being like, you know, we are playing Bosman and wife. And she's like, you touch me again. I will cut off your ears. And he's like, yep, <laughs> no, you did mention that the first time we met. You did mention that you would cut off my ears. I was wondering if you'd evolved on that position, but you have not. <laughs> so- yeah, but we see him being sick, recovering from his poison, her nursing him back to health. There's this great moment, right? Because bad actors don't know this. He's lying down and she's giving him the spirit water, English patient style. But you can't drink while you're lying down. So we right. watch this actor <laughs> almost drown. So He's good. like, blah, blah, blah. stop, <laughs> you're, you're spirit waterboarding me. <laughs> <laughs> And then John gives his life to God. And I'm like, have you stopped? Did, did, did the metaphor quit? The <laughs> metaphor is so good. Who the fuck could blame it? The movie was losing the movie to itself because they don't know what metaphors so are. Bad. And they panicked and they were like, uh, enhanced interrogation techniques. We'll do that. We'll do fucking torture <laughs> and make him Christian. There you go. And then there you go. he converts to Christianity by Stockholm Syndrome is the final lesson of the movie. Yes. Is there, that's the lesson. Yeah, that's the takeaway. Yeah, he gives this monologue, most of which is drowned out by the fucking music, of course, about how he gave his life over to God. And then we get the Jesus quote, right? The water I give them takes away thirst altogether. It becomes a perpetual spring within, giving them eternal life. So they like dunked on their own metaphor. Oh, well, I guess you wouldn't have to drink it more than once, would you, if this was a metaphor for that? I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure the message of this movie is Bad is bad, but good, on the other hand, is good. Hold on. Let me write that down. I'm definitely really Poison. writing this down on, <laughs> yes. my, on my paper. <laughs> All right. Well, now that Heath knows to avoid badness and choose goodness instead, I guess we can wrap up yet another God-awful mini. <laughs> <laughs> 